Thank you very much, Luca, for the invitation. So, my talk about nerve trauma, causes of nerve injuries. The injury of the peripheral nerves can occur in, through a variety of trauma. Common causes of nerve injury include laceration, a focal contusion, for example, uh, with gunshot wounds, stretch or traction injury, compression, drug injection injury, and electrical injury. This is a case of a drug injection injury. You can see here a very huge medial nerve in a drug addict who was injecting, injecting his, uh, his drugs in the elbow and touched the medial nerve by the way. So there are three types of nerve lesions and they have a Greek words, Greek names for that. For that. The first one is the neuropraxia. It is a mild injury of the nerve. The nerve can repair itself in either within minutes or after a number of weeks. The second name is the accident mesis. It is broken nerve fibers but no lesion of the nerve sheath. The nerve can grow back to their muscle or skin areas but this process can take several months. And the third word is the neurot mesis which is a cut nerve which never comes back to the normal uh, after, uh, after the wound. So the first lesions that I will show is uh, compression lesions with, where ultrasound can show you uh, some different uh, possibilities. The first one is that you don't see anything. So there is no nerve lesion in ultrasound. You can see sometimes a, when, when you deal with a motor nerve, an edema of the muscle uh, which is involved by, which is innervated by this nerve, you can see sometimes enlargement of nerve follicles, enlargement of the nerve itself. The examples for this compression lesions are the carpal tunnel, of course, the cubital tunnel, the tarsal tunnel, and the anterior osseous neuropathy of the syndrome of the uh, flexor uh, digital nerve. And you can see here a case of a compression of the anterior interosseous nerve. You cannot see anything on the place where the nerve is. This is the anterior interosseous nerve, but you can see very quickly that there is an edema of the flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum uh, communis uh, profundus by comparing with the contralateral uh, side. You can see also that the uh, pronator quadratus is not the same on the affected side than in the contralateral non-affected side. It is also hyperechoic. So sometimes the nerve is not involved by compression, but the, uh, the motor, the motor uh, uh, the muscles can be involved by a compression of the nerve. On the other side, you can see here compression of the ulnar nerve in the uh, cub cubital tunnel, and you can really see that the proximal and distal ulnar nerve is uh, much too big compared with the place where the compression occurs. So the stretching lesions are another type of lesions that you can see also in uh, uh, sometimes with ultrasound and again there is either no nerve abnormality by example for example in the tarsal tunnel in valgus flat foot you cannot see very much in the uh, tibial nerve at the tarsal tunnel and sometimes you can see a little enlargement of the nerve and this is the case where the nerves are changing from levels from fascia. They are coming from the deep and going to the superficial part of the limb, for example. Or also when the nerve is going into arcades, like in the elbow, the interosseous, posterior interosseous nerve changes from level to uh, passing through an arcade. So the typical examples for these stretching lesions are the posterior interosseous nerve in the elbow and the superficial peroneal nerve at the third part, in, in the inferior third part of the lower limb. This is an example of the uh, posterior interosseous nerve. You will see here the radial nerve, the, uh, which is divided in two, and the posterior interosseous nerve is this one. And you can see by following this one that suddenly it becomes bigger at the arcade of froze. So this is a stretching lesion of the posterior interosseous nerve. This is the superficial uh, peroneal nerve. This is the, these are the peroneal muscle. This is the fibula. And you can see at that level that this nerve is much bigger than it is before and after going through the fascia, which uh, leads to the superficial part 
of the nerve. So you can see sometimes very little enlargements of the nerve. And then the third condition is of course the open wounds or the post-surgery uh, iatrogenic wounds. And in this case you can see partial or complete cut of the nerve which leads always to an enlargement of the nerve or of, of the nerve follicles. You can see also a mass arising from the cut end of the nerve, which is called neuroma, of course, and you can see that sometimes the cut is complete and there is no distal nerve after the stump that you see with ultrasound. Ultrasound is very helped by the visualization of the wound and you put, of course, your probe at the level of the wound and the visualization of the proximal and distal part of the, of the nerve. Of course, if this patient, if this patient has problems, paresthesia on the dorsal part of the end and has a cut there, of course you will not look to the radial nerve here, neither there. You will put your probe exactly at the place of the wound and see what happens there. This is an example of a hand of a patient who had a little wound uh, at the uh, flexor part, at the palmar part of the, of, the, of the hand near the metacarpophalangeal joint. You can see here the two tendons, you can see the artery, you can see the artery on the either side and some veins. And if you look very carefully to the little nerve there and to the little nerve there, you will see that, that at the level of the wound there is a little change of this nerve and this nerve becomes bigger there. This is the wound of the, uh, of the digital, digital nerve. This is another example here where you can see that uh, there is a carpal, sorry, a carpal tunnel release, a surgery uh, by surgery, and the patient is complaining of a sudden uh, pain and, uh, on, on the level of the uh, thinner eminence. So you will see that the wound is there, by the surgeon, this is the scar, and you, if you look very carefully to the little palmar uh, continuous branch of the medial nerve, you will see that there is a little neuroma there. You see it very clearly here, which is becoming normal afterwards. Okay, so this is uh, this is the case of what you can see with very very tiny need, uh, tiny nerve lesions because you see the scar on the skin. This is of course a very a very big neuroma of the tibial nerve due to a, uh, a wound uh, on the uh, medial malleolus, and this is another case of the ulnar ulnar neuroma uh, due to another scar in the in the continuous uh, place. But sometimes the radial nerve is very very often involved. This is a case of a neuroma on the radial nerve. You can see the little little very little branch of the of the radial nerve you can see the stump here and you see no radial nerve afterwards you can see in, in longitudinal and uh, cross and uh, short axis uh, uh, view in this patient there is also a wound uh, which causes two different neuromas in the radial nerve and this patient was also complaining of a loss of extension of the of the uh, of the the wrist and uh, everybody was uh, thinking that this uh, caused this was caused by the nerve lesions and in fact ultrasound discovered very clearly that there was also a non a known uh, lesion of the of the tendon of the extensor carpi radialis tendon which was causing the loss of extension of the wrist when the wound is closed, it is, it is a little bit more difficult because you cannot see the, the little scar on the skin and you must find where the nerve is uh, injured. So it needs a lot of discussion with, this, with the patient to uh, know exactly what happened recently. What happened recently. In this case, for example, this patient was uh, complaining on the, uh, about a paresthesia in the dorsal hand. So the lesion was, of course, at the radial nerve, but where? He has no wound, he has nothing very special. We were seeing by following the nerve from the elbow to the wrist, we, was, we, we saw a little stump there in the radial nerve. The radial nerve is there. You can see that it goes uh, uh, further than the, the stump and then the, the, the little mass there, and the mass involves only a part of the radial nerve. 
So it was a neuroma. And then we discussed with the patient and we realized that he was, he was operated from his uh, hip, from a replacement, a total replacement of the hip. And he was wearing a, for a long time this kind of braces here. Uh, and this was injuring, uh, of, of course, just the place where we saw the neuroma at the level of the of the radial nerve. So very in, important to discuss with the patient. This patient has a peron, uh, superficial peroneal neuroma that you can see here. And if you don't have this uh, preoperative uh, image of his broken leg, you cannot imagine what happens. Okay, if you just have this, you cannot imagine. Uh, you cannot imagine what happened. And of course, this was a direct, uh, direct trauma of the peroneal nerve due to to this peroneal displaced fracture. So take home messages: some little nerves show no damages. So if there are motor jobs, don't forget to look to the corresponding muscles. If they are not motor, it's a little bit more complicated. Some nerves show only small or follicular enlargements. In this case, you must compare with the unaffected side every time. If you have an open wound, it's easy. If you have a closed wound, you have to discuss. And this leads to the advantages of ultrasound over other techniques like MRI. Because we can look very carefully to the patient's skin, which is not, uh, not always the case when we put the patient in the MRI uh, set. And you, we can ask the patient about the disease, the history, the symptoms, what happened recently to them. We can reproduce the symptoms. This is very important too, by probe compression, we can do the a kind of tinnel sign with ultrasound, and we can follow also the nerve from the top to the end of the limb. Thank you very much.